Let's talk Coachella Valley. I'm Conrad Negron with Tina Marks, your host for a fun show. Informative show. We're going to entertain, explore the Coachella Valley. Give what people else? a lot of knowledge, a lot of things that you have not heard about. We're going to bring it to you here. And welcome back. We are at Perch. We're our home away from home where we film. And today we have the pleasure of welcoming back Dr. Malcolm Lesseboy. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having we me. We had you on a prior um, segment. And um, for those people that didn't see that segment, I want to go over briefly some of your credentials. Um, you know, I had to actually print this out. This is um, two pages of resume. And uh, this is the summary. You're, your complete resume includes 101 pages. I, I've never seen anything like it in my life. You are so accomplished. Um, in 1977, you became you, a part of the American Board of Plastic Surgery, and um, you are also uh, the clinical professor at UCLA School of Medicine. You've been on Nip and Tuck. You've been on Extreme Makeover. Uh, I, I, I can't believe that somebody actually has that much time in this lifetime to accomplish what you have accomplished. You've also authored three books, 30 articles. I mean, the list does go on and on. Um, are you still uh, at the UCLA? Yes. yes. You are. Okay. Full-time? No. Uh, I was full-time professor there for 25 years. Okay. And then I decided uh, uh, this part of my life, I uh, might as well try to make a living. So uh, I opened a private practice uh, in Encino. Yes. Uh, and what's the uh, name of that uh, no, that's just uh, less avoid plastic less surgery. Avoid, okay. And uh, essentially, uh, I do my big reconstructive cases at UCLA, and I do my aesthetic cases at Encino or in Beverly Hills. Or in Beverly Hills. Place. Okay. Uh, but I'm still a professor there at UCLA, and I still teach the residents and give lectures, and not only at UCLA, but around the country and the, and the world, too, for that matter. And now we have the pleasure of having you in our valley on Fridays, and you're going to be working with Dr. Feld out of the same office. Exactly. So the Valley residents are going to be able to experience you, which is which is absolutely amazing. And when you are choosing a plastic surgeon, what are you looking for? Well, that's a very good question. Uh, first, you, you really need to make sure that they are board certified and they're a real plastic surgeon. Unfortunately, in Los Angeles, for example, if you look in the yellow pages under plastic surgery, 60 or 65 percent of those people listed are not plastic surgeons. How can they call themselves a plastic surgeon? I that's, mean, that's a good question. Also, what are the how? Are, yeah. What is what is their training? This is a free country, yes. and and in a free country, you can call yourself anything you want. And as a matter of fact, if you look on the internet, uh, a lot of people call themselves plastic surgeons who are not plastic surgeons. And so you really need to do your homework and buyer really beware. Um, those those doctors who list themselves as plastic surgeons in the yellow pages or on the internet could be dermatologists. Uh, gynecologists, ophthalmologists, uh, ear, nose, and throat doctors, and some ear, nose, and throat doctors do very good uh, facial surgery, uh, but uh, the others uh, I think you have to really be um, wary of. And so the best thing for a patient to interview a person is to call the American Society of Plastic Surgery. Okay. And they can find out if the doctor that they are going to see or have seen is a truly board certified plastic surgeon. Now, it doesn't mean that every single board certified plastic surgeon is fantastic uh, uh, because we have the bottom of the barrels and the top of the barrels, just like any profession uh, specifically. But at least you have the, the sine qua non of the person being honest. Okay. And, and that is key. Absolutely, because mm -hmm. I mean, it is your fa it is your body. You can't change. You can't reverse cer certain things. I mean, they have now this reality show, botched. Yes. Uh, to reverse a lot of these things, yeah. and I, I understand you. Did you train? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, Doctor Debro was one of my residents, and he asked me to go on botch the first season, and I said, oh, maybe not. And then the second season. But he, he wants to have me on the third season, so I'll probably go on there. Oh, fantastic. But we're still going to have you here in the Valley. Oh, yes. I'm oh. going to be here on Fridays. Oh, good. Oh, yeah. fantastic. Okay, so I want to talk about fillers, okay? Yes. Now, I uh, I use Botox, yes. and I do use uh, Restylane in my lips, and that's about the extent of it. Now, um, as somebody ages, uh, first of all, what do you feel about fillers? Are they safe? Um, are, yes. Is there, uh, it is. So uh, the body's not the short, absorbing any kind of toxins no. or poisons or anything no. like that? Short, the short uh, answer is that they are safe. They're safe. Um, 
Years ago, uh, we were injecting collagen, and there are uh, a number of patients, uh, there were a number of patients who were allergic to collagen. Mm -hmm. So we always did a test, a little skin test, to find out if you were allergic to the collagen. Mm -hmm. But these days, in the synthetic fillers like Restylane, Juvederm, these, these types of Perlane, these types of uh, fillers, uh, I, I have not heard of any allergies. Of course, it always could be, but it's, it's possible. The key is to have an experience. Oh, so that would be it, you, if you are allergic to it. That's correct. But not, how about if you're injected in the wrong place? Can you hit, I mean, you can hit a muscle yes. and it could yes, it is possibly possible. die. Or, it is, but, well, I don't know about dying, but it can cause some damage. And so you need to go to a, to a qualified person. Now, dermatologists, some dermatologists and some otolaryngologists, some ENT doctors and plastic surgeons, all are very familiar with Botox and with fillers and do it very, very well. And so you don't have to be a board certified plastic surgeon to inject fillers. Uh, many dermatologists, uh, their entire practice is injecting fillers and Botox. Okay. Yeah. So, so it, it is a good thing to, to eradicate some of the concavities in the skin. Okay. So I'm going to use myself in, as an example right okay. now. Um, outside of that, I am noticing a little bit of a, a drop here, jowls. Yes. Okay, and and my other concern is uh, under my eyes get can get very crapey. Yes. So what would you suggest for those? Okay. Two? In, in your particular case, I would not inject anything. Really? I mean, I'm just telling you the truth. Aww, uh, uh, hear that? <laughs> the key is that if one, if a patient comes in and just wants to have something done because they feel there's a little imper uh, imperfection of, the, uh, of that sort. Uh, and you do it, then sometimes it causes more of a problem. In your particular case, you're talking about the jowls. The yes. jowls is a fullness. Uh, if sometimes it doesn't feel like it feels like a dropness. Well, <laughs> <laughs> and and, no. and my and, and I almost feel like it creates okay. a frown, yeah. frown line. That's a different story. Okay. Yeah. Now what we do is we call these marionette lines. Okay. Uh, uh, you're too young to have seen Howdy Doody on, on television. I've heard of it. Okay. <laughs> but it's this puppet that uh, his mouth would go up and down. We call these Howdy Doody lines. Mm -hmm. And so these, in some patients, we can truly inject and fill out that concavity, so to speak, that dent in these vertical lines. Oh. And so that's, that's where And that would be fillers... filled with what? Uh, Botox no, or no, wrestling? No, no, with a filler. With a filler. filler, okay. Let me just explain a little bit the difference between Botox and fillers. Okay. Botox is a, is a medication, if you will, that actually relaxes muscles. Okay. It relaxes muscles. Fillers is a different type of situation, which is like a collagen type. Plumps uh, it. Which actually fills in stuff. Got exactly. it. Exactly. Okay. It doesn't relax muscles. It doesn't paralyze muscles. Botox is a relaxer of muscles. And so if we have these creases, kind of these 11s, so to speak, between the eyebrows, mm -hmm. We use Botox in that area so that the cross-looking uh, appearance when you so cross you your so eyebrows exactly <laughs> relaxes. Yeah. But we don't want to put too much in because no. if we put too much in, then you, you don't have an expression. Uh, exactly. exactly. You, when you speak to someone, yeah. you have to have some expression. I, I agree. And most yeah. people don't want, they don't want any lines at all. I don't really get that. So what would you recommend for me? I know you said you wouldn't do anything, yeah. but if it was bothering me, the crepiness under my eyes, is there only yeah. one thing you could do or I mean, okay, outside now, of eye creams and things like that? Yeah, you bring in, you bring in a, another situation now. Uh, one thing we have to understand is the anatomy of our eyelids. The lower eyelid has very, very thin tissue paper thin skin and our cheek skin where the lower eyelid joins the cheek skin is very thick. And so we call this the trough, the trough. Okay. And so sometimes patients have a sunken trough and we put a little bit of filler into that trough. Oh, you can To do equalize that. the areas between the lower oh. eyelid skin and the cheek skin. Okay. But in your particular case, you said, well, what about the crepiness? Well, if you put fillers under this very, very tissue paper thin skin, That's it not does, it's not good. So it's it would, not be, good. It would it, be face lift. No, not face lift, but a lower Eye, eyelid. Or, or lower exactly. eyelid. Okay. Exactly. All right. Yeah. Well, we're going to talk more about uh, that. We're going to talk about facelifts, and we're going to talk tummy tucks, and we're going to talk breast augmentation on our upcoming episodes. You're not going to want to miss this. He's definitely going to be back. Thank you. Thank you so much Thank for being you. here. Thank you. My pleasure.